Hello and welcome to this next film in the series on investing in private companies at Bailey Gifford. This film is about myth busting and we're going to bust three big myths about investing in private companies. The first one, Rachel, is we invest in really early stage high risk uh, seed capital companies. Do we do that? I think it's worth setting the scene a little bit. Back in 2008, there were only 18 companies that had a valuation of a billion dollars or more, so-called unicorns. In today's world, there is over 1,200 of these companies. So these companies are established businesses with um, clear revenues or, or pathways to, to, to revenues, profitability or again, pathways to, to profitability. They are looking for additional capital to really help grow or unlock that next stage of, of transformational growth. Yeah. I, see, I think it's, uh, it's really important for context to uh, give the audience uh, an idea of like some of our largest yeah. companies. So let's yeah. look at the, the, the largest five private companies mm -hmm. we invest in. SpaceX, the, the, the rocket company. Mm -hmm. um, ByteDance, the owner of TikTok. Um, Epic Games, uh, which essentially runs the engine for, uh, for the likes of Fortnite. Um, Northvolt, the European battery maker, and Stripe, the payments company. So let's, let's look at those. SpaceX and ByteDance, they are both valued north, well north of $100 billion. Yep. Um, they are uh, generating cash. Um, uh, and then if you, if you bought anything online recently and paid for it, it's likely that Stripe will have powered that. Yep. Um, if your kids play on Fortnite, or if indeed you play on Fortnite, James, no. <laughs> no, no, no judgment here. Uh, it'll be empowered by Epic Games. Yep. Uh, and Northvolt has uh, $60 billion of, yep. uh, of, of orders on its, uh, on its order book. And if they were public companies, they'd be in the, the FTSE 100. They'd be yep. big enough to be in the FTSE 100. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. It is important to recognize that that inflection point does change per company. For, for some mm. companies, it might be uh, $150 billion, and they're looking for the mm. next stage of of investment. Some of these companies are extremely capital intensive. They need multiple rounds of, of mm. support. And for some companies, they might be pre-revenue and they're just looking for that next stage of investment for certain R&D, research mm -hmm. and development projects. Um, and they might need capital too. So it just depends per company. If you look at the, the dollar failure rate for Series A companies, so that's slightly earlier on in the journey, it's north of 16%. Whereas when you get to series D, E, and F, where Bailey Gifford tends to participate, you're, you're into the low single digits then for, for failure rate. So right. a lot of the upside, a lot of the growth still remains for these companies because of the kind of companies that we invest in mm. that are changing industries or creating new ones entirely. Yeah, so that leads me on to myth number two. Mm. Um, Investing in private companies means you need to have a seat on the board. Mm. You need th hundreds of people going in and helping them set up their processes or shifting or pivoting the business model. And we don't do that, James. No, that's right. So often private equity can mean going in, taking a majority stake, trying to turn around a business. Whereas what we're trying to do, we're, we're, we're stage appropriate investors. Um, we're taking minority positions in these mm -hmm. companies, in companies that we believe in the management that's there and the ideas that they're fostering. Um, so we're, we're not taking on that risk. We're not trying to turn them around uh, and change what they're doing. We support the ideas that they already have. Yeah, so they're pretty mature companies that essentially mm -hmm. need a different skill set, whether that be supporting them on the road to IPO and beyond or exactly. connecting them with other people. But th they don't need us to change their business. They're already, you know, well-functioning businesses. Exactly. And I think the important part there as well is we're not pressuring them to list as mm -hmm. well. We, we're about supporting the ideas and developing their business. As and when they do list, we'll be there to support them. Mm -hmm. But we're not, we're, because we can be agnostic about that, it means we don't need to pressure them. Yeah. I think a big part of the the role that Bailey Gifford plays is the continuity of capital mm. and the well-aligned shareholder, the well-aligned supportive yeah. voice that we provide to the management team because we have this institutional understanding that we talked about in our early video. We know what it takes to be a great growth business and that doesn't happen overnight. Mm. Yeah. These companies need that support. They don't necessarily need 
us to come in and change things. They mm. just need us, need capital to, to execute on the ideas that they yeah. already have. Exactly. So myth number three, private company valuations are stale. <laughs> um, uh, we don't think ours are, but can you just give us a bit of a color on that, James? Yeah, so I think historically the, the reporting frequency when it comes to the private equity space is lesser, and, and that can lead to this notion that valuations are left untouched for can long you, periods. What, what, so how often would a traditional private equity fund value their, revalue their, their, their companies? They tend to report quarterly, but what they're more focused on will be the, the annual. Um, so you maybe know, once a year they change the value? In, in times gone by, I think that, that's certainly been the case, and that impression is still there. Whereas we don't have that luxury. We, we've have, we hold these assets and vehicles like Scottish Mortgage that are pricing daily. We need to be on top of our valuations. Um, so the, the way we deal with valuations looks to uh, almost mark to market to be able to, to, to react and, and look at what's happening in the broader markets, whether that's company specific or volatility in the broader markets mm -hmm. and what that might mean for private companies. So we're pretty confident that we have amongst the most robust and diligent valuation process for private companies in the business. But I think that's a whole film in itself. So if you want to watch that film, please check out the other films in this series, including the one on valuations.